Hello guys, Jeffrey speaking here. So today I'd like to do a review of the Asus U32U Ultra Portable Series Notebook. Before I jump right into the review, I would like to show you guys the I.O. ports of this notebook. On the left hand side, first and foremost, you get the VGA port, the second is USB 2.0 port, the third is HDMI out port, and last but not least is the air vent for ventilation purposes. As for the front, you will not have any ports, but you will have two LED indicators. The first one is the status indicator and the second one is the battery indicator. On the right hand side, you will get the memory card reader slot. Surprisingly, it does not have the dummy memory card to avoid some dust going into the reader. Next, you will get the headphone jack, microphone jack, additional USB 3.0 ports, but no worry because it is backward compatible with USB 2.0 devices, uh, LAN port, DC in port, and last but not least is the Kensington lock. As for the specifications, this notebook is equipped with uh, AMD APU, which is the AMD Brazos Dual Core E450 with a clock speed of 1.65 GHz. So what is APU? APU is an aberration of accelerated processing unit. Basically, APU will enable the manufacturer to feed the processor into smaller form factor. Besides that, it also produces lesser heat, having longer battery life, and yet does not sacrifice your visual experience. For instance, streaming or online HD content and crystal clear playback of your favorite movie. Moreover, it also has an integrated graphics card, which is the Radeon 6320, which supports the DirectX 11. As for the operating system, uh, it has the Windows 7 Home Premium 64-bit. The memory is 2GB with a clock speed of 1066MHz and the HDD is 320GB with the RPM of 5400. So next I'd like to talk about is the Windows Experience Index. The Windows Experience Index is 3.7. For you guys' information, Windows Experience Index is determined by the lowest subscore, and in this case, is due to the processor itself. Now, I'd like to show you guys some size comparison between the Asus U32U and the Asus G73J Hash. For you guys' information, Asus U32U has a diagonal size of 13.3 inch. As for the G73J Hash, it is 17.3 inch. If I stack the U32U on top of the G73J hash, there is a big difference in terms of size. So now let me show you guys the top view of these notebooks. This is the front view. This is the side view. And lastly, is the back view. In terms of build quality, in overall it is quite decent, especially with the price you pay for this notebook. The thing that I like the most about this notebook is the brushed aluminum cover. Uh, it makes this uh, notebook feel more rigid and strong. As for the bag, it is made out of plastic. And one thing to note, the plastic material used to build the battery pack and the back cover is a bit different. So now, let me show you guys the inside of this notebook. One thing that I mentioned in my unboxing video is the material used to build the palm rest. And after a few weeks of usage, I confirmed that it is made out of plastic. But that doesn't bother me so much. As for the keyboard, it is made out of uh, plastic as well. But there was a major problem, that is the keyboard flex. The problem was apparent at the top middle part of the keyboard. So if you are a typist, please make sure that you go to the nearby shops and try it yourself uh, and see whether this is a major problem for you or not. As for the hinge, it is made out of uh, plastic as well. For my taste, I think it is a bit loose, but of course, it, uh, this may vary according to the users. 
Now I'd like to show you guys the wheel wing angle of this notebook. So now I'd like to talk about the performance of the speakers. In overall, I'm not really satisfied with the performance of the speakers as the volume is a bit low, although I have boosted it up to the maximum. Besides that, I'm not really like the position of the speakers, which is located at the bottom part of the notebook. So if you are an audiophile, I would not suggest you guys to get this notebook. Before I move on to the pros and cons, I'd like to let you guys hear some sound clip of this notebook. For you guys' information, this uh, volume is on the maximum. So that's all. Now I'd like to talk about the pros and cons of this notebook. First and foremost, I'd like to talk about the pros. The first pro would be the price itself. As you know, this notebook RRP is 1649 ringgit Malaysia, which is quite cheap and affordable for almost everyone. So if you are a person who type in budget and want a notebook for doing some web browsing and simple office works, then this notebook should be in your consider list. The second pro would be the long battery life. According to ASUS, this notebook can last for approximately 10 hours, but in reality, I found that it only can last for approximately 7 hours with the maximum setting. So the maximum setting I'm referring here is, uh, for example, the brightness of the screen, which I'll set it to the, uh, to the maximum and extra. The third pro would be the profile and weight of this notebook. This notebook is only 1 inch in thickness, which is really slim. As for the weight, it will cost you around 1.7 kilogram. The fourth pro would be the minimal heat production. As you know, this notebook uses the AMD APU processor, which will produce lesser heat and eventually creates a really uh, conducive and cooler environment to work with. The last pro would be the brush aluminum cover, which, on, which not only add to the aesthetic value, but also give a tougher and a more solid build to the notebook. As for the cons, the major problem for this notebook is the keyboard flex. If you are a typist, please make sure that you go to your nearby shops and try it out, and see whether it bothers you or not. The second con would be the slower processor. As you know, this notebook is equipped with dual-core processor with a clock speed of 1.65 GHz. So if you are a multitasking guy, then this notebook would not be your top choice. The third con would be the speakers. The volume of these speakers is a bit low. Uh, besides that, I dislike the location of the speakers as it is located at the bottom of this notebook. As for the room of improvement, I would like to see a backlit keyboard. Nowadays, I believe that there are a lot of notebook users who use their notebooks under low light condition as well as in a dark area. The second suggestion would be including an optical drive. That would be an extra selling point for this notebook. So that's all for my review today, guys. And for you guys out there who have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please feel free to hit the subscribe button above and I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao! Ultimately, please like, comment and subscribe.